throughout this week. Thank you for holding up the rain. I pray that those underwear, that you would give them traveling mercies. Lord, I pray that the musicians will sing and you would give them strength. I pray for the musicians and the multimedia that there will be no technical difficulties today. Thank you for the sound people. I pray that they will be sound. And I pray that you would bless everybody in this sanctuary and the service will go smoothly. Thank you. Amen. Amen. You, you may have your seats, please. And we want to welcome you to Glad Tidings Tabernacle. We are located in Gome, and we are Upbeat Church. We are pastored by the Bishop, Sonny Williams, and his wife, Maureen Williams, and we are happy to have you with us today worshiping. So whether you are viewing us via our social media pages, YouTube, or on Facebook, we want to thank you, and we pray that you will be blessed in Jesus' name. This morning, we welcome you into the sanctuary as well. And we want to recognize those who are celebrating birthdays, anniversaries. So we'll start with the birthdays first. This week from this week onwards to Saturday, who will be celebrating? Tuesday. Tuesday, all right. Oh, today. Amen. Blessings, Brother John. And, and we pray God's continued blessings upon your life and that you will live a full life with God. Anybody else who is celebrating? What about weddings? Wedding anniversaries in the month of January. They normally say January is a hard month, so most people don't do a lot of things. But we are celebrating life. Amen. And the psalmist say that let everything that has breath praise the Lord. It is his breath in our lungs. So let us stand to our feet as we give God all the praise and the glory. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship in one accord. Oh, Father, we recognize today that it is because of your breath in our bodies why we can sing. Hallelujah. Why we can praise. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah, hallelujah to our God. Glory, glory, hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Come on, let's do that one more time. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. We gonna sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise. It's to our God. Say, God, my Savior. God, my Savior. God, my healer. God, my deliverer. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. Every word of worship 
with one accord. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. Oh, sing hallelujah, hallelujah, to our God. Glory, hallelujah, is to our God. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. God, my Savior, God, my Savior, God, my Sing with 
majesty, divine authority. Jesus we worship you Lord we bow in your presence we bow in your presence we sing this morning all along oh Lord One more time. Oh.
just want to be with you. Just want to be with you.
know, in the book of Second Corinthians and the, the chapter, the chapter nine. And the analogy used there is that of sowing and reaping. You know, as a boy, my parents grew young. And every year we we harvest the yam. It was yam season, you dug the yam, it was stored in a the yam house. Back then, everybody had some kind of little house that you store up things. And uh, the yam will be in a nice heap. And after you eat yam, and you will eat yam. But you couldn't eat all the yams. Because if you eat all the yams, there will be no more harvest. If you eat your seed, don't expect a harvest. And that's a principle that is laid out in God's word. You've got to sow to reap. And uh, if there is and, and Paul said, if you sow sparingly, you will reap sparingly. And if you sow bountifully, you will reap bountifully. That's the message. So as we pray for those who will be sowing, whatever be the designation, it's a seed. And oh God, we place before you, Lord God, every seed. You said it is God who makes things grow. Growth is in your hands, O oh God. And Father, we release the seed as an act of faith. And we pray today, God, you will prosper the seed that was sown in Jesus' name. God, every hand that will disperse, God, the same hand will reap a harvest. Thank you. We pray that faith now will be released among us, O oh God. So that, God, uh, we will sow into your work today. Lord, you said, God, those of us who sow, our righteousness will be forever. God, we will abound in all good things. Thank you for your blessings now. We receive your blessings, God. We receive the blessings on the seed and we anticipate a harvest. God, uh, we anticipate the next time that you will sow. You give food for the eater and seed to the sowers. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. It is raining all around me. Oh, I can feel it. It's the latter rain. Oh, ride on Jesus. Give us more rain. Until we are wet and we are so. It's a 
soak in the latter rain. Somebody say, somebody say, oh, it is raining all around me. Oh, I can feel it. It's a latter rain. Oh, ride on Jesus. Come on.
God is good. Praise God. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. May we be soaked and may we be wet. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. God is so good. Praise the name of Jesus. And when you give, it will come back to you. Good measure. Press down. One of the things that I've learned is that some of us, we... We, 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 we're looking back for the money. We're looking back for the money that we give. But God don't always give you the money. But you see, when you're doing your thing, your job, your business, he bless your hands. He bless your hands. And as he bless your hands, you, 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 you start to get better. So you don't always look for the money. And just before the intercessory comes, I'm going to tell you this. I was doing homework with my daughter, and she was doing clouds. And I was talking about how clouds are formed and what happens when rain comes. And you know, this year, God showed me in Ecclesiastes 11 about clouds. He said, when you look at the clouds, it's in verse 3. When you look at the clouds, they get heavy. They get heavy with rain. But you know what happens? They release. They release the rain. And as the rain releases upon the earth, there's a harvest. And I say, God, I've been doing this thing with my daughter. And look, you have it in your word. So I'm just telling us today, whatever we could give, because all of us may not be able to give money, but we could give something else. When these clouds release upon the earth, it goes back to the sea, the rivers, right? When it releases. And then it goes back to the same river and the seas and get it back. Amazing. I never see it. It is so amazing. So when you give, it's going to come back. Maybe not like how you want it, but trust me, down the road, you'll see it. Amen. So at this time, we're going to have our intercessory prayer by Brother Jamali Kamabach. Amen. Be a young people tonight. I mean, this morning. <laughs> Good morning, church. Please go ahead for the prayer. Lord, this morning as we come to you, well, as I come to you, this intercessory prayer. Firstly, I want to thank you for all the mercies you've bestowed upon us. Another week. We're all here in good health, good strength, amid what's going on in the world, Lord. Things that we must thank you for. Lord, we have our united crusade coming up in February. I want to give a special prayer for this crusade. Lord, we want this crusade to be different than the ones in the past. We want this crusade to be a crusade for the unsaved. Not only those of us who go to church and believe that we are saved. We want to see the unsaved and those who believe that they've gone too far for you to come back for them. Coming out to this crusade. We know that it, a human being, a person is never gone too far for God. There are some of us who believe that we're gone too far. We want those to come out and have a special interaction with you. We want those to come out at, and have a special encounter with you. We want them to come out and have their lives changed, their hearts touched. We want a difference in their life, Lord. We want them to experience a new season where they could see you as the center of their life, the center of their being. We want them to experience you the way we have been able to experience you, Lord. I want to pray for these crusades, safe, enjoyable crusades. I pray that we see a difference in the turnout and that you will bless and touch everyone in attendance, these crusades. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Praise God. You may be seated. And at this time, we will have two testimonies. Brother Andrew Young and Sister Rhea Ray. Good 
good morning everybody when I was asked to give a testimony where is Janaya I don't see her the first thing I said to her is girl I shy I afraid stage she said but you play the keyboard I said that's different behind there is very different behind there I'm shielded by the music but I thought what can I testify about I I, I grew relatively um, blessed. I don't have one of those drunken left in the gutter stories. But this morning I was reminded that 10 years to the day, you know, January 20th, 2014, while at UE, I was attacked. Um, it was a night, well, it was a night, obviously. It was after nine. I was taking a break from studying wanted to get something to eat, and there's a gas station slash convenience store just down the hill from Yui. It's a usual trek. Classes go up until 10, so students are on the road, vans are on the road, and I was at the bus stop just waiting for a van to run down the hill. On my phone, talking to my mother. It was Blackberry them times. And there was a guy standing just a few yards in front of me, and I'm not paying attention to this man. I'm from St. Vincent where it's relatively safe. Well, then it was far more safe. I've never been in any situation that was such. I didn't pay attention to what's happening. The man said something which I thought was good night and I responded good night and I continued on my BB. Which I later realized he was saying, give me that phone in Bajan tongue. If you have a Bajan talk, you know I couldn't understand nothing the man said. I later realized he said, give me that phone. When I realized that, I said, no. This phone ain't come easy. I just give away my phone. Needless to say, the man pulls out a machete from wherever it was and swung at my neck for a phone. Instinctively, I raised my hand. And I don't know if I lost fingers, but I know I lost my slipper. Because the speed I took off with to my home, you seeing Bolt couldn't touch me. I am, t and it was a good way. Not fit, I was a slim fella, but I wasn't fit, and I'm telling you, full speed. By the time the adrenaline wear off, and I saw the amount of blood on my clothes, I had no feeling in my hand. Um, I had to go to the health clinic we had at, at campus to be told, well, you're going to need injection and so I am deathly afraid of needles. And then on further examination, they said, okay, looking like you may need to do some therapy on your hand because I got a really deep gash on my left hand. I could not for months bend the first three fingers um, here. And I mean, all the thoughts going through my head Boy, you could have died here in another man's land. You didn't see your, your family, etc., etc. Amongst all of those thoughts, there was one that stood out. Therapy. I can't play music. No, man, this ought to be a joke. But I'm telling you, I mean, and I had PTSD thereafter because one day I'm home and the window falls out and I'm telling you, I locked up in my bedroom. I did not come out until my, my um, housemates came. It was so bad, and I don't think most people know of this story. <laughs> it was so bad, I mean, but I prayed through it. Um, I never had to do therapy, thankfully. Prayed for my healing. Um, well, obviously, I'm playing music without any um, effects from the incident. But, but I mean, what what... Like I said, I thought and thought, what can I say? But God does so many things for us that we never really realize until we take the time to think about it, you know. Um, and I have so many other things I could have spoken about past, but I don't mean calling them other time because I'm real shy, <laughs> right? But I just want to encourage us to continue to stay close to God, continue to be thankful and gracious even for simply waking up on mornings. That in and of itself is a blessing. All right, thank you.
Good morning, everyone. Um, I would just like to testify about God's goodness over my life. Um, I've grown up in church. I gave my life to Christ at a relatively young age. Um, I was also blessed with parents who instilled in me godly principles throughout my life. And um, God has taken me faithfully through you know, my entire life, even as I went to school and now that I'm finished school, he still remained faithful to me. And uh, I'd just like to encourage other young people that, you know, it is possible to be a Christian young person and to remain in God, serve him faithfully throughout whatever you face. And, you know, he would come through for you in everything. Thank you. Praise God. At this time, we'll have our scripture reading. As Sabrina Scott will be taken from John, 1 John, chapter 29. John, John 1, John chapter 1, verse 29 to 51. Good morning, everyone. So the scripture reading this morning will be taken from John chapter 1, verses 29 to 51. Here begin it. The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I meant when I said, A man comes after me, has surpassed me because he was before me. I myself did not know him. But the reason I came baptizing with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. Then John gave his testimony. I saw the spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. I will not have known him except that the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, the man on whom you see the spirit come down and remain is he who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and testify that this is the Son of God. The next day, John was there again with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, Look, the Lamb of God. When the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. Turning around, Jesus saw them following and asked, What do you want? They said, Rabbi, which means teacher. Where are you staying? Come, he replied, and you will see. So they went and saw where he was staying and spent the day with him. It was about the tenth hour. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard that John, who heard what John had said and who had followed Jesus. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, we have found the Messiah, that is the Christ, and he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas, which when translated is Peter. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, Follow me. Philip, like Andrew, and Peter was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathaniel and told him, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law, and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth, can anything come good from there? Nathaniel asked. Come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathaniel approaching, he said to him, here is a true Israelite in whom there is nothing false. How do you know me? Nathaniel asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus said, you believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You shall see greater things than that. He then added, I tell you the truth. You shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the son of man. Hence the scripture reading. 
Amen. And let us put our hands together as we welcome our bishop. As he gives us the word. And yes, the children, it's, we do have children's church. So you're free to go now. All the children. All right, so let's give the children a hand as, as they would leave us for their time together upstairs. And welcome, we are, we are happy to have you here this, this morning, um, and to God be the glory. So we want to welcome our, our sister from Trinidad, um, welcome, sitting next to Sister Deaconess Plato. Would you stand as we welcome you? Welcome to St. Vincent. Welcome to, to Glad Tidings Tabernacle. God bless. And so let us pray. Father, thank you for your, your great love towards us. We are, God, we feel blessed. We are blessed. We are blessed. God, with food, clothing, and shelter, we are blessed. We are blessed, God. We are surrounded by family and friends, God. We are in our right mind. We are blessed, O oh Lord. And I ask you now, Father, O oh God, that you will grant the spirit of understanding, O oh God. I pray for revelation knowledge. We pray for the authority of the Holy Spirit, God. In the name of Jesus, so let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. So I take you back to the reading in John 1, 35 to 51. And this year, we are going to examine, we are rediscovering our founder's vision. I mean, not talking the founder of Glad Tidings, Jesus. He's the, he's the founder and owner of the church. And we need, we need always to have a fresh revelation of his vision for the church. So, I will just pull from the passage. There is, a, there is a thought there in the passage that I want to pull out. And so, I will talk to us. I'm going to use, I'm using a Jamaican, Jamaica Patwa name. And the, in Patwa, the Jamaicans call people who are tricksters and crooks, Jinal. You're a Jinal, meaning you're a con man. You are a trickster, Jinal. And we will talk this morning about Mina no general. No general. So I emphasize, I want to emphasize from verse 47. Jesus saw Nathaniel approaching and said to him, Here is a true Israelite in whom there is no guile. Jesus said, this man ain't no jinal. He's a true Israelite. And there is no tricks. There is no guile. There is no, the man ain't going to con you. 
Verse 48 says, How do you know me? Nathaniel asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathaniel declared, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Then Jesus said, you believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You will see greater things than, than that. And he added, very truly I tell you, you will see heaven open. And the angels of God descending, ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Nathaniel was not a, no, he was no general. No general. You see, Jesus compares and it's more like a contrast. Nathaniel with that of Jacob in the Bible. He's making the reference because he talked an Israelite. And I will show you. It's a, com it's a comparison. But Nathaniel gets a very favorable treatment. He's contrast with this con man. For that was who Jacob was, a con man. Guys, could we have a, some heights off this thing? Put some bass on it, please. And Jacob, Jacob really was a general from his birth. From the man born. Not even before he born. From his womb. The man is a trickster. And you, we, we see that in Genesis 25. 24 to 26. They were twins in the womb. And... Uh, Esau came first and Jacob after and Jacob held on to his heel saying, you must not go out first. I must be the first one because from birth the man was after to say, I'm going to steal what you have. From birth a crook. In the womb of crook. And then we see, we see him growing <coughs> in his youth. He is still a general. 29, 25, 29 to 30. The older brother, Esau, came home from the field and the and he is hungry, hungry to death. And Jacob, the house boy, is cooking lentil soup. And he begged, he begged for some of the soup. And Jacob said, well, we could make a deal. The deal is, I'll give you soup, but you've got to give me m m the birthright. You've got to give me the privilege of being the firstborn. Because firstborn had uh, carried with it the privilege of when the estate of his parents would be divided. The firstborn will have. Two portions. 
And so Jacob was able to get a deal. And so Esau sold his birthright for a bowl of soup. What maneuvering. What maneuvering because Jacob is a general. And he's growing, he's growing being this con man. And in chapter, chapter 27, he is now a general with his mother. Well, if you find a general, and a mother is a general, my God. And, and we have, we have the, the story there of how they are going to steal the blessing of the brother. And I invite you to read, read Genesis. It's very dramatic. It gives you, gives you good story of how he and his mother connive because he's a, the brother is a hairy creature. And how they have to, because the father is blind. And they outwitted the old blind father and got the blessings. But, but here, if we talk about genetics and environment, then this genal had both. You realize that the family of Abraham had a problem with lying. You know that. Father Abraham had a problem with lying. He, um, Isaac told the same lies. And Jacob now is doing the same thing. But so you get it from father. And the mother seemed to be a crook. And in a while from now, we will talk about his uncle on his mother's side. So from both sides, this man seemed to have a kind of nature for generalship. And his mother is in collusion with this crook. And so he stole the birthright and his brother is angry. And so he, he ran away from his brother because his brother vowed that I will kill you. And he goes to his uncle and please read the story again. It's very dramatic. He, he meets the love of his life, Rachel. But remember, he is from a general family. And his uncle tricked him and gave him Leah. And he has to work another seven years for Rachel. But his uncle doesn't know that this man now in his adulthood is an expert as a crook and a con man. And as you read the story, you read the story of the general now in his adulthood and how he maneuvered his uncle. The man is a genius, but a crook. And I don't know how he came up with such a plan to, to make another deal. He loves deal. He will make deals. And so he made a deal with his uncle because he feels that his uncle is not giving him justice. And he makes an, a deal with his uncle that seems fair. That uncle, any of the animals, any of them that will born with a spot will be mine. And the pure, full color animals will be yours. That sounds like a great deal. What are the chances of animals becoming spotted if the mother and the father and the whole flock 
a solid color. But he came up with this brilliant, crookish idea. That he puts before the trough where all the animals would have to come and draw water. And he, he split. Get wood and get some different colors. And he, as the animals will mate at the feeding trough, the animals start becoming spotted. And then he went further to say, well, the weak ones, the weak ones, I don't want those. So those were not exposed to the, to the environment to influence the spottedness. And look and behold that the man had flocks of spotted sheep and donkey and camel and you name it. The man is a jinnal. Jinnal he is. But you know. Jesus knows all the genals them. Jesus knows us all. Amen. Jesus knows. And he said uh, to Nathaniel in verse 48, Nathaniel said, how do you know? How do you know that I am not a genal? said, I saw you. I saw you under the fig tree and I knew. Every genal is known by Jesus. And listen to me. These days, the genal them are on the increase. The genals, them are in the increase, even in the church. Even in the church of Jesus Christ. If you don't have the discerning of God upon your life, them genals in the church of Jesus Christ will trick you. We have developed Conart this. We are con people these days. And that conmanship know no boundaries. You know, some years ago, years ago, and I'm not referring to glad tidings, so don't use your mind. Some years ago, I, I, I was doing some business with a brother. And I know that the brother is a genial. <clears throat> but I reason that genial will never trick the pastor. <clears throat> so I enter into a business deal with the genial. And you better believe the genial struck. The genial struck. The genial told all kinds of lies on me to cover his genial ship and his track and his dishonesty. I said to us, the genials them are on the increase even in the house of God. And I ask us, like Jesus, you better ask God for some eagle eyes. You better ask God to give you some eyes of discernment to know the Gina Lamb because they come in the name of God. They come in the name of Jesus. They mimic righteousness. They mimic anointing. They mimic holiness. But underneath there, they are Ginals. They have some dangerous agendas. They are wolves in sheep clothing. (coughs) 
all kinds of genals. There are genals. Those who can't see a somebody's dollar and don't want to take it. So those sometimes are people who look for positions of treasurers. Give me the treasurer. Well, those people are like, if you have cheese and you leave the rat to watch it, Ginals, you call them. Jesus said, I saw you. I saw you under the fig tree. You are known by God. You are known by God. The eyes of the Lord. The Bible says, they are everywhere. God sees you. God knows you. Ginal, them are clever. The church of Jesus Christ must wake up and open our eyes and ask God, give me, give me eagle eyes to see beyond the facade, to see beyond the covering, and to see them for who they are. They come in all forms. You let them into your house and you know what you will get. You let them among your children and you know what they will get. It sounds like I am weird this morning. But, but listen to me. I am on. Well on. Direct on. Spot on. Jesus said I saw you. I knew you. You see, Nathaniel is a contrast. He said, I knew you were an Israelite and there is no conmanship, no guile in you. You're pure, you're genuine, you're good. But he's referring to the story of the Jinal called Jacob. The Jinal, them come, them who have, who are pedophiles, you call them. They want to run boys club. They've come in the church. But we must know them. We must discern them. Jesus know the genials them. I'm just saying to us, just be warned. I'm not asking us to be to become skeptical now. That everybody you see now, you you want to find now. You see a general and no, 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 no. That's not how you live. You can't live like that. Not in skepticism, but you can't be gullible on the other extreme and take everybody's word. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. I'm telling you. Brothers and sisters, too many crooks. There are too many crooks. You want me to shout louder? Too many crooks in the church of Jesus Christ. Too many crooks. At all levels, at all levels. All levels. All levels. I listened to some story of some, some, some generous people. You know, generous. People who are generous. Open, open-handed. Big-hearted. And what some church people have done to them. Their level of abuse. The how many monies we have borrowed from them, you know. We, we expect some money and I'll pay you back right away. And we get in the money. 
You understand? We get the money and we come, we watch people straight in their eyes. But we not pay them back. Jesus knows the Jinalem. You can't run. You can't hide. You can't hide from him. You see, man looks on the outward appearing, but God looks at the heart. The heart, the heart. The heart. But you see, the good thing about the story is the general encountered God. Amen. And I pray that generals will have an encounter with God. He encountered God. Because you see, he's leaving. He's leaving his uncle. And he's heading back home. And he's desperate. Because he heard his brother Esau is coming to meet him. And I, I, I don't know if you know about brothers. Your brothers and brothers concerning inheritance. You know about that? Inheritance, dead left. <laughs> you, you know that in St. Vincent? Listen to me, it's one of the, it's, listen, it's one of the most intense battles you could have about family members fighting over inheritance. Serious piece of battle here. And you wonder, hey, both of you came from the same womb and, 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 and have that kind of intense hatred for one another because one took all the land and ain't give me a bit of peace. And so in desperation, the Jinal encountered God, had an encounter with God. And again, the story, the story is very dramatic again. He held, it's, it's a wrestling bout. The wrestling. And Jacob will not let go. And he makes the demand, bless me or I will not let you go. Will not let you go. You see, this may song, the, the match may not make good sense to us in our culture. But in, in that culture, it was one way in which a legal case could be settled. It could be settled with a wrestling match. We see that on the movies. We will fight. And whoever is the winner. Then you win. So Jacob and God. Are in a, in a wrestling match. He struggles with God. Well the text said the angel. But we know that from scripture that this angel, the angel of the Lord, seems to be the pre-incarnate Christ. He battles with God. There is a struggle between Jacob and God. But you see, it was Jacob who was on trial in this struggle, not God. Jacob. You see, all his life, he was spent in conflict. There was always conflict from his birth. Conflict in the womb with his brother 
conflict in his youth, in his adulthood, conflicts. He's a struggler. He's a swindler. And Jacob struggles now with God. You see, he will prevail at any cost and by any means. He's a custom. <laughs> He's a custom. Believe it or not. That's his life. Jacob gets what he wants. And Jacob is in desperation now. God, you're going to bless me because my life could be ended. You see, every con man will come to face his payment one day. Every con man, you, you could imagine those people, those boys who kill people and one day they face the barrel point black. The barrel in front of them. And Jacob is desperate. And he cries, oh God, bless me. You hear this kind of desperation for guys when they are in murder charge. You hear the desperation when they lie in a hospital bed, hanging to their life like a thread. And they are saying, oh God, bless me. I have been a crook. It was this wrestling with God. The urgency of Jacob's life drove him against his opponent. There is a thing about desperation, my brothers and sisters. There is, a, you know, desperation gives you, it generates a kind of energy that we don't normally have. When your backs are against the wall and you stare death, it gives you a sense of urgency. And the man holds on to God with such tenacity, like a pit bull grip, that the only thing the angel could do it says it hit him on a tie. But you see, in the Bible, thigh is a euphemistic expression. Because the Bible gives softer expression of very hard reality. So death, it doesn't say he died. He said he went to be with his fathers. Eve knew his wife. A yes, soft expression. For the reality that we very often can face. <laughs> so, thigh there is used for his genital. It's a euphemistic, a soft expression to say, the only thing that God could get a release from this man is, God hit him in the pants. And who Mike Tyson being kicked in the pants won't go down? Who? Who Mike Tyson want to come and demonstrate it here this morning? I have a soft shoe. I could try it with you. <laughs> Listen to me. The only thing. He, he, he received one kick in the pants, cramped him. And it says, the blow the blow he received knocked his hip out of the socket. Think of the desperation of holding on. God, you're going to bless me. You're going to bless me. I will not. I will not let go. That's the cry of desperation. And if only, if only Gina's will come face to face with God and will have an encounter with God like this. 
But I say to us, don't enter a battle with God. If you've been playing the fool, playing the fool like adrenal, whatever been the, the, the problem or the weakness with you, you've been playing with God. God been dealing with your heart in a, in a gracious manner. God been wooing you, but you continue in your behavior. Be careful. God does not give you a permanent hip. From that moment, Jacob walked with a limp. With a limp. And listen, you meet so many Christians these days with a limp. Meaning there are some consequences that you get from struggling with God. God has been speaking to you, but you ignore God. Be careful. God doesn't give you a limp. A limp. I've seen so many. I've seen people walk out of church. Walked away from altars and get into situation where they are named, where they are paralyzed, where they are, they, they carried a limitation for the rest of their life. They have to live with the limp, even though they would experience God's forgiveness and grace. I don't mess with God. I don't mess with God. I don't mess with God. I fear God. I fear God. I don't mess with God. God, he is, the Bible says, he's a what? A consuming fire. And the Bible says, it is a terrible thing to fall in the hands of an angry God. The match was over. Because Jacob limped. He couldn't win in his strength. He prevailed in his weakness. Lame and helpless. He clung to the one who had laid hold on him. You see, faith wins. When it knows that all is lost and clings to God alone. And God said, Jinal, I break you. And today, your name is changed from Jacob, the Jinal, the crook. Where there was so much guile in the man. And you understand what he was saying to Nathaniel. He said, you are an Israelite indeed. For there is no guile in you. God changed his name. You see, normally, the name Israel that God gave to, to Jacob means God prevails. But you notice that the Lord turns the meaning around as he gives the name to Jacob. And, and God, there, there, is a, there is a little ambiguity to the name here because the name comes from the standpoint of grace. 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 Your name is. Jacob prevailed in his weakness because of grace. Grace. God allows a human being to prevail. Oh, what do you what what if God had given Jacob what he deserved other than a little kick in the pants and knock his 
keep out. It is still grace. God prevails. And to every general, encountering God will mean a change in name. No more Jacob. No more a general. Abandon the cookery man. Leave it. It didn't work. It can't work. You hear me? It can't work. Friends, it can't work. It doesn't work. Come real with God. It doesn't work. He prevailed. In that name, Jacob's desperate faith is acknowledged by God. God prevails. God prevails. When God prevails, he can break you. I ain't want to be broken by God. I want to fall on the rock. I want mercy. <laughs> I can fall on the rock. I don't want the rock fall on me at all. I crush, I dead. No, no, no. Grace. 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 But you notice that Jesus said to Nathaniel, verse 50b, he says, you will see. You will see greater things than these. And then he added, truly, I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angel of God descending and as ascending and descending. And I say, Genals too have an open heaven. Genals too. Because you remember, you remember that Jacob, God, when he, when God broke him, it was the very spot on his way to his uncle that he encountered God and went his way and forget all about God. It was at Bethel that Jacob had this dream of seeing the stairway going towards heaven and angels ascending and descending. What an access to God. But, but note something about this thing, about the open heaven concept. And I use open heaven because I very often hear people talk about this open heaven. And we hear this song. It's an open heaven. But in Genesis 11 and verse 4, remember about the, the building of the, the Tower of Babel? And it says, they said, the people said, come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that, reach, that reaches to the heavens so that we may make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we will be scattered over the face of the earth. And the same, the same phrase that describes Jacob's stairway to heaven is the same phrase that is describing the Tower of Babel. The Tower of Babel was really man's tower Man's tower couldn't reach heaven. God said, I don't want it. You must not build it. And God stopped the project. But we notice that the stairway tower of, of Jacob's dream was God's answer to the tower of Babel. The top of it what? The top of it reached God. 
for God was the builder, not man. Not man at all. You see, God alone establishes communication between heaven and earth. It doesn't come from man's quest, but, but from God's intervention. It was God who took the initiative. So Jacob, the crook, had nothing to boast about. You see, these days we have some so much boasters around the place and churches that, oh my God, oh my God, you, you understand that? We boast about we righteousness, we boast about we anointing, we boast about we this, we boast about we this, 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 this. I am this more than you and that. Song like Babel, man. It sounds like Babel. And everything that is made by man will fall. <laughs> everything that is man made, man made will fall. It was God in his dream that God created this. Highway to heaven. God open heaven. That even Jacob, not yet Israel, could go up there. I want us to get the point. It is never ever your righteousness. All our righteousness, the Bible says, are what? Filthy rags. Whether you be con man, good man, honest man, all of that is like filthy rags in the sight of God. It takes the initiative of God to come to you. Not necessarily you going to him. For we cannot go to him except by what? By Jesus. Jesus is the war. Jesus is the stairway man. Not by us. Not by works of righteousness. That's what the crook was discovering. It's all about grace. All about grace. Every general can experience grace. Grace, grace, God's grace. You see, we know where we are now. And we could always talk where we are now. But how you get where you are? How did you get where you are? And do you know that several people who were like you didn't make it? <laughs> Brother Basil, seven of them gondolera men who used to push gun and drink rum. And run women, some of them dead, cold, done, decay, and rot. But God, but God, amen, but God, but God, it is God who visited a, a, a general running away, and he had no intention of fulfilling his vow. But God showed him that there is a stairway, man, there is a reach you could reach God. But it takes God's initiative, not yours. You see, when we, when, we, when we have that kind of belief that is about me, you know what is going to happen? Then we start doing con man thing. You know the con man ministry? You know about con man ministry? We could do a lot of con man things. There's a psychology about everything, you know. And you could learn the psychology. You just got to understand Pentecostal people and what they think. And you could do all of that. You become a con man. Because you miss the point. It's not by me. It's not by me. Not by Sonny Williams. Don't look to Sonny Williams for answers. I may just be a vessel that God uses. It is about God. 
is about God. Jacob saw. Jacob saw this state leading to God. It is God's initiative, not mine. It is God who reached me. I weren't looking for God. And how I reach here is only God. God and God alone. Every step of the way, every moment of my life must be lived by grace. Grace, 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 grace. God can change any con man and make you like Nathaniel, an Israelite indeed. When Jesus look at me and you and he knows us, what does he see? Israel or Jacob? Nathaniel, an Israelite indeed. There is no con man about you. No agenda. Your words are your bond. What you see is who you are. Are we like that? Are we like that? Or we have two lives? It was the it was a movie that said uh, Highs and Jackal. There's some movie that go like that. Where somebody is good in the day and they turn vampire at night. We are one. Our words and our lives are one. We don't have a, we don't have a life for the public and a life for the private. They're the same. They're the same. An Israelite indeed. What you see is who I am. My words reflect my heart. I am what I am. An Israelite indeed. For God knows me. God sees me. God knew what I did last night. God knows my mind, my intention. Whether they are pure or they are impure. He knows my agenda. Could he say of me, Sonny Williams, an Israelite indeed? And there is no guile found in him. Could we become like that? People who we could trust. People we could leave our money with. People we could leave their girl children with us. And we have to say, boy, two children to nowhere. Eh? Could they leave? Could they leave their deed with us? Old granny said, I just leave in the deed with you. And I say, divide up the land. My God, before the granny down there, you don't teeth it. An Israelite, an Israelite indeed. And in him, there is no guile. That's the point, my friend. No genial. No genial. My God, may God help the church. May God help the church. But I serve warning. When we don't, we enter a struggle with God. And you might be left with a limp. Until Jesus comes, you have to live with that. Talk to some people about their limbs. An Israelite indeed. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we stand before you. We stand before you like naked. God, in the words of Psalm 139, where can I flee from your presence? God, if we make up our beds in hell, you are there. If we take the wings of the morning when we arrive, oh God, you are there. If we go to the bottom of the sea, you are there. Oh God, you see us. 
You know our thoughts from a far way off. Oh God, you know us. And God will say, let the psalmist search me, oh God. You know my heart. Try me and see if there is any wicked way in me, oh God. Cleanse me, oh God. We'll hiss up and I shall be clean. God, we pray today in the name of Jesus Christ that you will remove, remove, oh God, the hypocrisy from among us, God. Cleanse our hearts, oh God. Purify our, our minds and our motives, oh Jesus. Jesus. God, we stand before you, Lord. We stand before you, God. We cannot hide. Oh, Jesus. And you said, be not deceived. Oh, God, that's your word. For God is not mocked. Whatever we sow, we will reap. Oh, God. Sober us up, oh God. Sober our hearts before you today, Lord. Yeah. And, and for that, have search me, oh God. Search me, oh God. My thoughts today try me, oh Savior. No, my thoughts, I pray. See. There be some wicked way in me. Cleanse me from every sin and sin.
try me, oh Savior. No. spend a little time before God this morning. Nathaniel asked, how do you know? Jesus said, I saw you. I saw you under that fig tree. I saw you. I don't know what you were involved in, but God said, I saw you. I don't know what was a thinking. God said, I saw you. I don't know what you have said, but God said, I was there. I saw you. Oh, God. We pray for grace, oh, God. We abandon, we surrender, God. We don't, we, God, we will not fight. We will not fight. Oh, Lord. We say like Peter, thou knowest. You know us. You know us. And we thank you for your grace. Thank you for your grace of God. Grace, grace, God's grace. Jacob celebrates grace. We want grace. We throw ourselves at your mercy, God. We are guilty as charged, so we throw ourselves at the foot of mercy and grace. Jesus. Jesus. God, it's grace that brings us to the stairway to heaven. It's grace that opens heaven, God. It's grace. Thank you for grace. Thank you for grace. Thank you for grace. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your grace. know as usual we want to pray also for those who are sick those with needs we want to obey God this morning in offering prayer for you and if you are here and you would like prayer just where you are to stand so God we come we come not like those at Babel. 
they come like Jacob. Asleep. And you intervene. We pray for your intervention now, God. God, we do not come on the basis of who we are and what we have done for you, but we've come, God, on the basis of grace. For God, you did intervene. You did intervene when you took our sorrow and you carry our pain and you bore it in your body and you said by your stripes you were healed and so God on that basis I receive your healing now on behalf of those who are standing and oh God in Jesus name we receive it now we grab hold of your grace of healing for there is a ban in Gilead there's a ban in Gilead and oh God we receive your wellness now God we receive your wellness in our minds our wellness in our emotions oh God so we curse anxiety and depression and all of that must go in Jesus name God we curse anger oh God we curse jealousy we curse all those of the mind in the name of Jesus Christ any trauma any abuse God we, we rebuke that in Jesus name and God we receive those of the body Every organ of the body, God. Wherever there is an infirmity now, we receive your healing now, God. Let that healing now be manifested, Lord God. Oh, God, let instantaneously persons will realize I'm healed in the name of Jesus Christ. God, there are those for needs, physical needs, financial needs, material needs. God, you are a provider. And we thank you for doing it today. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So our secretary will come at this time with the announcements. And uh, I, I just want to express, we missed it last week. And for one of them, the week before, we express our condolences to Sister Martha on the passing of your brother. And uh, the Matthews and the passing of Pastor Michael Ori's mother, please accept our condolences and we are praying for the family that God will comfort you in the time of your sorrow. Good morning. Please listen to the announcements. Boys Club will meet tomorrow at the Daphne Community Center at 4.30 p.m. On Wednesday, the church will join Pawi SVD District for prayer and fasting from 6 a.m. to 12 midnight. Glad Tidings will conduct the one-hour session from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. All are asked to take note, the link will be sent to the WhatsApp group. Also on Wednesday, our United Prayer with the other churches in the area continues. And the summit will be held right here at Glad Tidings at 7 p.m. And all are invited to attend as we pray for our upcoming United Crusade. Sorry, eh? hold on. Yes. 
so um our, our crusade will be held on the 18th to the 23rd of february our united crusade so we will join faith one ministries belay new testament rehoboth and redemption christian fellowship on these special meetings under the theme, One People Proclaiming One Gospel. And this will be held at the Daphne Community Center grounds from 7 p.m. nightly. And the speaker will be Evangelist Brian Worm from Grenada. Please note that the church will hold its annual business meeting on Sunday, February 25th at 5 p.m. Announcement from G&D Gospel presents Awake Gospel Concert. This will be held next Sunday, February 4th at the Russell's Auditorium from 6 p.m. All about tickets, $20, regular 25 at the door. Tickets are available from Brother Fenton John. These are all the announcements. All right, so um, let me just say about the prayer on Wednesday. Uh, the last Wednesday is usually our district virtual prayer and fasting, 18 hours. And uh, we, have, we have the permission of the, of the district. Not that Glad Tidings is breaking loose. No, no, no. Uh, it, our, press, our prayer on the platform will be at 6 a.m., we have, they have given us an early one so that in the, in the evening, we could be here with the other churches. We want, we want the whole of Glad Tidings to come out to pray, please. All right. Those of you who have been to the others, the others have been out. And um, we would want as many of us as possible to be at the prayer meeting beginning at 7 p.m. It's our final one as we prepare for this United Crusade. All right. Thank you again for coming. Let's stand together. Amen. So the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. <laughs>